to hear the Word of God, if you will, turn to Malachi chapter 2 this morning. Malachi chapter 2, again, we are going uh, all the way through the book of Malachi today, uh, and look now, if you will, to verse 10. Um, as we've been looking at the book of Malachi, it is a very uh, book, it is a book that is very much emphasizing the need of of revival, and you saw that in the uh, life of those in Israel at the time. They were in much need of revival. They may have been doing the outward religious acts, maybe some of the religious ceremonies, and they weren't quite doing that to the will of God either. But again, we saw that their hearts were far from God. And what we're going to see today, you can entitle the message today, Revival, Honor God by Honoring Your Spouse. But my friend, listen, here's the truth today. We could come today and we could come on Wednesday and we could try to honor God in everything that we do here in church or our acts of religious service here. But listen, our uh, worship to God does not end here. Amen. Amen. God is very much uh, aware of and very much cares about um, every area of our life. That we are worshiping Him in every area of our life. That we're seeking to honor Him by seeking His will and doing His will in every area of life. And let me tell you today what we're going to see very clearly today. Even in our secret life. Even in our life at home. Even in our uh, life between uh, your husband or your wife. Uh, God is very much aware of how you worship Him in those relationships. Amen. And if we want to be truly revived today, then I believe that our ears would perk up and that we would hear God's will for our home. Amen. And that we would want to do God's will in our home. It may be that we have not followed God's will in our home in the past. Um, all of us have fallen short of it. Uh, but maybe God's word today might Prick your hearts. Let me tell you, my friend, some of, the word, some of the things in the Word of God, they're very hard to hear. We're living in a culture today that um, sadly, even amongst professing Christianity and labeled churches today, there are many that don't want to share anything that would offend anyone or hurt anyone's feelings. But let me tell you, my friend, if God said it, we need to hear it. Amen? Amen? So with the Word of God, it might pierce deep today. It might hurt. It might step on your toes, but it might not only end at your toes, it might hit your heart. But that is a good thing. Let the Word of God do that. And examine your life and your heart. Examine with the Word and the will of God. Amen? And if it does hurt, listen, I pray that we would repent. I pray that we would be broken over maybe how we have fallen short of the will of God. But listen, when you repent and when you uh, plead with the Lord and cry out to Him, uh, listen, God wants to comfort. Amen? Those who mourn will be comforted. But the truth is, we need to hear the Word of God and we need to actually have our hearts broken and mourn first and let God comfort us. And then listen, if we've done things wrong our whole life even maybe, let us today with repentance and with forgiveness of God and by the grace of God, let him pick us up and push us forward in the, in the way he would have us. Amen? Let's bow first to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you today and we thank you so much for your goodness to us. None of us here, none of us deserve it. We don't deserve the least of your mercies, but you have been so good to us. You have loved us so much. Even your truth that uh, even points out where we fall short, that even points out where we are in sin or where we have been in sin, even your truth and your warning to us is by your mercy. May we, though, today honestly see ourselves. And may we today, though, uh, cry out for you to help us and to point us into the direction you would have us go in all of our lives, every area of our lives, and even in our homes. We love you. We thank you. May we be a people that is truly seeking your will and truly seeking to please you. 
We love you. We thank you. Please use me as a vessel. And if anyone here today is lost, we pray that they would be saved. And all of us as the saved, we pray that we would be revived. And it's in your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Again, we mentioned that God is going to examine our personal life today. He's going to get personal. And listen, because what today we don't need to do, we don't need to think that it's fine to try to compartmentalize our faith. We can't just put our, all of our life into boxes and we can't say, look, God, Sunday, Wednesday, you have my life there. I'll seek your will there. But everything else, it's mine and I'm going to do my will. No. God, when we, are, when we are saved and when we're truly revived and we're seeking the will of God, you're going to find in the will of God and in the word of God that he is going to touch every area of our life. Even those places that it, we are most vulnerable with. And maybe those places where we have, we have failed the most with. But listen, today this truth comes, but this truth comes with love. God is seeking to uh, give us His will. Listen, that we may be exactly where we need to be. Amen. We don't want to be going through the motions. We don't want to be having part of our lives right with God, but having the areas that we need to have right most, we don't want to have them unaddressed. Amen. So if you will, let's look to verse 10. We'll read all of the text as we do. We want to... Hear the Word of God out. We want to hear His Word. Uh, and there's power in His Word. We want to hear His Word. And then we want to expound, to teach, to explain His Word and see how we can apply it to our everyday life. Verse 10 says this. It says, Have we not all one Father? Have not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother? By profaning the covenant of our fathers. Judah hath dealt treacherously. And an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved. And hath married the daughter of a strange God. The Lord will cut off the man that doeth this. The master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of Jacob and him that offereth an offering unto the Lord of hosts. As this have ye done again, and this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out, insomuch that he regardeth not the offering any more, or receiveth it uh, with good will at your hand. Yet you say, wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness against thee and the wife of thy youth, because whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet is she, uh, is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit? And wherefore one? That, ye, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit, that ye deal not treacherously. Again, if you will, we're going to look section by section and we won't be able to dig out everything that there is to dig out, but I pray that you would go home and study even deeper. But um, as we go through this text, no, as you just read, it's speaking of, of putting away of, of divorcing. It's speaking of several things. Listen, it's speaking of um, even first we will see um, of dealing treacherously with fellow man. God does not desire this. He desires the opposite, that we be loving, that we be faithful. He, he's also going to address who you choose as spouse. And we're going to see that in a moment. God desires that we should, um, as believers, not be unequally yoked, that we should marry a, another fellow believer. But then also it, it addresses that idea and it spends some portion of the text on it, This of the, that God hates putting away, that God hates of divorce. So again, we are going to look at these several things 
today. And he also said that when uh, his people were doing these things that he hates, that he does not will, that it was even affecting their offering to him. That it, it was putting strain, it was putting strain and distance in their fellowship with God. Even though they were doing these outward religious acts, what they were failing to do was to get right in their own heart and even get right in their own heart towards the one, the person in their life that they should be loving most. God does take this very seriously. I'll tell you today, we're living in a day where all of these things just mentioned, it seems like within uh, Christianity as a broad today, it seems like sadly that these things are all too often the norm of treating people um, treacherously, of being not loyal to people in general. It seems like it's just the norm at times and that it's acceptable, that it's okay, but God says I'm not accepting it. When it comes to, listen, one of the, one of the most important decisions that you would make as to who you would date and who you would marry that God cares very much about and He instructs us on, it seems that today that uh, we uh, don't care so much all the time what God's will for us is in that. It seems like when it comes to the issue of divorce today, we've even seen in our generation divorce increase. We've seen it be commonplace in our society, but also sadly in professing Christianity. Thankfully, we see this, that when it comes to professing Christianity, but it's a practice in Christianity, where God is taken very seriously, that the worship of God in church is taken very seriously in that home, and that devotion time in home, and prayer, and the reading of God's Word, and discipleship in the home, when it's taken very seriously, when that's the kind of Christianity that is seen there, thankfully that the rate of divorce is lower, Amen. We need to take God very seriously. But again, that, that idea today, sadly, that divorce is on a rise. But even an interesting thing that you've got to take into account with those stats as well, sadly, cohabiting is also on a rise. So sometimes you might not see a, a high number of divorce at times, even though it's high. Sadly, you see more cohabiting. This isn't God's will. God even speaks on the, again, one, he speaks as don't, uh, again, uh, have sexual relations with anyone unless it is your spouse. And what always happens in cohabiting, and it's a romantic relationship, that's what happens. It is. We're not dumb to this. It's also a very bad witness for the church and for Christ. So let me tell you today, again, I am here, I'm charged with teaching the truth. Even when things are acceptable in the day that you're living in, believer, we are called to be set apart. Amen? So God is calling you to be set apart even if we have done things wrong in the past. Believer, I pray, repent before God. Ask Him forgiveness and listen, He will forgive and He'll pick you up and He'll push you on the right way. But if we don't repent, we're in a bad spot with God. Amen? And what in the world will we teach our kids? If we would think that we did it bad, what in the world do you think our kids are going to do? And our grandkids. One of the reasons that God is wanting to keep the relationship together that he said here is because he wants to raise a godly seed. And I don't just mean a professing seed. Because there's a lot of professing children today that profess to be Christian. But I mean a true um, professing faith, amen? And, and kids that are truly saved and truly seeking the will of God. So believer, we're going to touch on some uh, truly personal things. But listen, do you want anything less than the will of God? It says here, verse 10, we'll go quickly through a few of these things. First, honor God by loving others. Real quick, I'll bring up that. He says there's one Father who's created us all. And it tells them that you've dealt treacherously with your brother. This is not, listen, this is not saying a 
universal fatherhood of God to all men. Listen, God is creator of all men. God makes that very clear. We should treat all men with love and respect. But God's word, listen, also makes it very clear. It doesn't matter if the songs we hear sing something different. What matters is what the truth of God's word says. God makes it very clear that if you are lost, if you've rejected Jesus, you are in your sin. God's word says very clearly, you are a child of the devil. That's not popular to hear today, but it's the truth. I was once, I was a child of the devil. Up until I was 12 years old, when I was made known of my sin, and God convicted my soul, and I repented of my sin, and I put all my trust in Christ alone as my personal Savior, up to that point I was lost. I did not know God. He was not my personal Father. And I was a child of the devil, doing the will of Him. But in that moment, listen, and God makes this word very clear, when you receive Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? And when the Holy Spirit moves in, you are born again. Amen? Amen. That is a new birth. You're spiritually made alive. You are made a child of God at that moment. Amen? But not before. Do you know that? I challenge you today, don't hear this idea that you're all children of God. What matters very importantly is what you do with the beloved Son of God. Amen? The only begotten, Jesus. If you want to be a child of God within His family, never to be separated from God, and to have an inheritance with God forever in a relationship starting with Him now that does not end, then you must receive Christ. Amen? No other way can you be His child. What's it speaking of here? Again, looking at the context, it's speaking of Israel. They had a brotherhood. They were the family of God. They were the nation of God. And He was telling them, look, your fellow Israelites, you're treating them treacherously. You're not being loyal. You're betraying them. You're not treating them in lo a selfless love of neighbor as yourself. You're being treacherous. Believer, listen, if we want to be revived, then honor God in the way that you love your fellow man, especially those of the household of faith. Amen? Will we get back to that? Again, we could do with the religious acts every time on Sunday and Wednesday, but the question isn't going, going deeper. God evaluates your heart, and He evaluates the way you treat His children. Amen? It goes on to say this, verse 11, you can entitle this portion, Honor God by choosing your, your spouse. Again, have there been times where we have not chosen what God has taught us to choose? Yes. And you know what God says? There's times where we've rejected God's will and maybe a believer married an unbeliever. God says in the New Testament teaching, stay married, be faithful. And pray without ceasing that your spouse will get saved. Amen? I've known people that they're, for many years they prayed and they asked the church to pray with them and they were praying for their spouse to get saved and finally they got saved. Amen? So again, if you did marry an unbeliever and you're saved, then keep praying for them to get saved. Live your faith out genuinely in front of them. Amen? Maybe there's times where it was two people that were lost and they, were, they, they got married. And then one gets saved and then the other doesn't get saved. Maybe until later. Again, what does God call you to? He calls you to faithfulness. Amen? But listen, this is God's original design. Are you ready? This is His will for the believer. It says, Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem, for Judah hath profaned the, listen, profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. Again, these people in the, in the people of Israel who were called to not intermarry with pagan people. They were called to only marry within the nation of God's people. Amen? 
But he, he, he's telling them, look, uh, you sadly departed from God's will. You're marrying pagan people. Do you know that God doesn't say that's fine, that's okay? You know, it actually says it profanes the holiness of Him. It says, before we get just a little bit deeper, know that the New Testament doesn't change. Do you know that even throughout my ministry of youth pastoring and then pastoring now, different people I've spoken to, young people, even older people sometimes, do you know that when I speak about the will of God, again, God says here, don't marry pagan people. But in the New Testament also, listen, it says believers do not be unequally yoked. Amen? Do you know that that idea is foreign to many professing Christians? That it takes them by surprise, that it almost seems insensitive and unkind? Believer, listen, we need to know the will of God. And we need to be a people that seeks the will of God. Amen? We don't want to just be revived on Sunday in a religious act here. There's things that God wants us to do here that's pleasing to Him, but listen, that don't need to be it. One of the greatest areas that we can honor God is by honoring Him and who we choose to marry and our faithfulness to them for a lifetime. Amen? So again, believer, know the will of God. Again, if things have been done wrong in the past, listen... Repent of that. Ask God forgiveness again. And He will comfort you. And listen, He will use you now. He will use you in your example before your spouse. He will use you in your, in your prayers, pleading for them to be saved. Amen. He will use you in your faithfulness to be here, to honor God by being here. He will use you in your faithfulness to speak about God in your own in your time of prayer at home, in your time of Bible study at home, God will use you in that. And listen, don't give up hope that I, and hope and pray that they will be saved. Again, with believers today that are unmarried um, today, don't have this prideful attitude from the get-go. Don't just say, look, I'm going to marry whoever I want, and I'm just going to trust that I will be able to lead them to Christ. That's pride. That's pride. One, it's rejecting the clear will of God, that's pride. But it is also pride in thinking that you have power to do that you don't. Amen? The gospel has power to save. And I'm just going to tell you, many people reject it. It is God that works on the hearts. Amen? So again, don't go from the get-go um, displeasing God and not seeking His will. But wherever you are right now, seek to do the will of God. Verse 12, it says this. It says, The Lord will cut off the man that doeth this, um, the master and the scholar, out of the tabernacles of Jacob, and him that offer an offering unto the Lord of hosts. What he's speaking about anyway, he's, he's separating them from the uh, interaction of the, the operation in Israel. That fellowship they, that they had in Israel. Um, that offerings that they would give uh, within Israel. He's letting them know this is serious. Don't dishonor God. Amen? But do you know this? Did you know it lists say, some people there? It says the master, the scholar, the one out of the tabernacles, the one offering an offering. What well, God's saying very clearly, listen, believer, God is a God that judges. God is a God that punishes. He's a God that chastens. Amen? He would not be a good God if He didn't. Amen? He wouldn't be the loving God that He is if He didn't do that. But listen, you need to also know this. God is not partial with His judgment. Amen? One, when it comes to final judgment... All of those who repented of sin and trusted in Christ, it's salvation in heaven. Amen? Amen. But all of those who have rejected Jesus and remained in their sin and never repented and never got saved, listen, my friend, it's hell. It's hell. I wouldn't love you if I didn't share with you that truth. That's how that judgment goes. But listen, even in judgment and chastening now, 
God is no respecter of person. And these people that were masters, that were scholars, they were even the ones offering the offering. They might be one of the first people that would be so proud as to think that God is a respecter of persons. They might be thinking that, look, look at all, look at my position. Look at what I am doing for God. I don't have to obey every command. But God is saying, look, I am watching and I will judge without partiality. Amen. Today, listen, my friend. It doesn't matter if it's the pastor up here. It doesn't matter if it's the deacon. It doesn't matter if it's the faithful Sunday school teacher. It doesn't matter if you have a ministry. It doesn't matter if you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're popular. It does not matter. Listen, God's word applies to you. Amen? Amen. We better listen. And His judgment does too. His ch and if you're saved, His chastening does too. Some of those people in these positions of, of spiritual leadership, they might be some of the first ones to get judged. Amen? But I'm just going to tell you, believer, you're leading and influencing someone. Daddies, mommies, grandparents. Y'all are spiritual leaders. Amen? So don't think that the will of God and commands of God and the judgments of God, don't think that they don't apply to you. Amen? It doesn't matter who we are. I pray, listen, if we do not humble ourselves, God will. Amen? So again, I, it doesn't matter if we're popular, successful, faithful in church. What matters is how we treat the Word of God. We come and we, we tune out. We're not listening. We think we got it all together. We're doing well. I, this, this doesn't apply to me. I've got it perfected. That shows pride. Listen, that's why when it comes to this, and it's going to share in just a moment, the Lord of hosts saith, God saith. That's why when we sit down and we study or we preach the Bible, we need to act like it is as it is. It's the Word of God. Amen? We should perk up. We should listen. It goes on, my friend, to say this, verse 13. You can title this portion again. God wants you to honor Him by the way you treat everyone. God wants you to honor Him in your choosing of your spouse. And let me add this in there as well. Don't flirt, again, don't flirt with the idea that you will just win them later because you, you possibly won't. I hope and pray that they're saved later if you, if you went down that road. But listen, you may have seen a few exceptions, but God says many times that unbeliever will draw away them after, uh, after false gods. But don't flirt with this idea either, young person. Don't flirt with, okay, I may not marry them, I'll just date them. I'll just get romantically involved and let my feelings get, get in the situation. Listen, we've got to be wise. Believer, honor God in not even considering someone, as, someone to date, someone to marry, unless they are a child of God. Amen? Moms and dads, let's instill this in our kids. I remember a person in college, a campus minister, that he helped instill that into me. He challenged me, what should be something that should be a non-compromise in to who to date and who to marry? And I'm just going to tell you, that's the one that, that I've never let change. They must be a child of God. And I'll even say this, one that it's clear that they love the Lord and they're seeking His will. Amen. Because there's a lot of professing Christians today that aren't possessing Christians. So believer, my friend, instill this in our families. Instill this in you. Let that be a non-compromise to only marry those that are of like faith and practice. It also, though, goes on to say this in the next section. Also honor God by faithfully loving your spouse. God cares about this love 
uh, and be faithful to the one that you've married. Verse 13, it says this, And this have ye done again. You've also done this, uh, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out, insomuch that he regardeth not the offering anymore, or receive it with good will at your hand. God's actually saying, look, since you have done these things, and he's about to even say more that they've done, since you've done these things, even with your weeping before me, I'm not receiving the offering. Why? They're going to ask why in just a minute. He's going to tell them, your heart is not right, even to your spouse. You could say all day that you love God, that you're seeking God's will, but if we have hatred in our heart for believers and for, for people around us, and especially our own spouse, then something's not right and we need to get it right. Amen? This is something that God says we better deal with. Do you, do you, you might say, well, surely God won't do that today. I, I'm a professing believer Maybe I, I don't want to be faithful. Maybe I don't want to love my spouse. Maybe I uh, take divorce laxalaically, again, with no care at all about it. You say, surely God doesn't care about that. Surely He's accepting all of my worship. But listen, even in the New Testament, God speaks on it as well. He says here, it says, 1 Peter 3 and 7, it says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, with, with understanding, is what he's saying, uh, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Listen, that your prayers be not hindered. Amen? We can't think today that God doesn't care how we treat the one that we're sharing our life with. Our spouse. The one person that we vowed to be faithful to and to love in sickness and in health for better or for worse, for richer and poor, till death do us part. Do you think God takes that vow seriously? He does. You know, God says even when you're married... And you have no care for your spouse and you don't even want to understand them at all. You're just wanting to do your thing and no care, consideration to your spouse. Did you know that God says that will hinder your prayers to me? Amen. So again, if you're, if you're thinking that you want to be revived, evaluate your heart to your spouse. Matthew 5 and 23 also says this. Therefore, again, just like with them that were bringing the offerings, he says, I'm not accepting it. Matthew 5, 23, 24, it says this. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Amen? Have you and I, have we ever tried to come to church or do something throughout the week for the Lord? And we try to just do that for the Lord, but that whole week, and even that very day, we've had some animosity, some problem unresolved with a fellow believer. We come try to worship God and we just act like we're all fine and well with God. And we're coming there holding hatred maybe for our brother or unforgiveness. Out of love, God is telling you, listen, you leave your offering right there and you go get that right. I think it's almost like a, as children, maybe sometimes you fight with your brother and sister and you run up maybe on your dad's lap and wanting to love all over him and maybe you even want to bring him a gift and, and say, here, daddy, this is what I brought you. And then you turn around and out of hatred, you sneer at your, your brother or your sister. I could imagine the father saying, look, I'm glad you brought me this gift, but you need to lay that down and you go treat my, my little daughter, my, my son right. You get that right. That would be the best gift that you could give me. You go do that. Believers, listen. Don't try to seek being revived without examining our own hearts to one another. Amen. 
we again you might we might judge our our spirituality, our level of revival by our actions that we're doing religiously. But God is very much a God that cares about your love for one another. Amen? He is a God who and very much cares about your love for your spouse. It'll get more into that right here in the next part. It, it says, yet you say, wherefore? Again, he says, look, I'm not accepting those gifts. And then they say, wherefore, why? They sadly, they just arrogantly ask God, why? Why aren't you accepting my gifts? We don't need to question God like this. We need to do more searching of our own, our own hearts and looking at His will and seeing are we doing His will. But anyways, He answers. It says, because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one? Why one? That he, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. You know what God clearly said? You want you to know why I'm not happy with you right now? Do you want to know why I'm not finding pleasure in the things that you're doing for me right now? He simply tells them because you have dealt treacherously with your spouse. And you know he even uses the word um, one, if the Lord, He has been a witness between you two. You know, when you have a wedding ceremony and you invite guests that are witnesses, we invite guests, maybe loved ones, family, whatever, but do you know who, who's also there? The Lord. Amen? You know that when we make that vow, that covenant, not just a contract that's to be taken lightly, legally, and, and it doesn't matter what you do with it. No, a covenant. When you made that covenant with your spouse, you made that covenant with God. Amen? And you made that covenant before God, and God is your witness to it. He's holding you to it. And those witnesses, they should hold you to it. They're the witnesses. Amen? It seems like times when later down the road when marriage gets difficult and it don't take very long. We're sinners. When life gets difficult, maybe that one of those spouses goes to someone that was a witness there. And they, they, they pour out their heart and they share how hard it is. Do you know what that witness needs to tell them? Stick in there. You made covenants. It's not to be taken lightly. You love that person. You stay faithful. You know what? That's what God's doing. I was witness to that covenant. And what does he say? You've dealt treacherously. With divorce, and I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm also not trying to condemn. Again, many people within Christianity have, have struggled through this. Many people have faced this. Many people have gone through this. Some may have done it for the only reason that it is permitted. Some may have done it for any other reason. My, listen, my goal is not to condemn. My goal is to share with you the word and will of God. Amen. And let him work. If we have done something, or if we're even considering something right now that doesn't match up with the will of God, believer, I plead with you, repent. You repent even of the thought of it. Repent, pour your heart out to God again. They were with weeping and crying, wondering why he wasn't offering, accepting the offering. That, that weeping wasn't right. They were just upset he wasn't accepting what they were given. What their weeping should have been was at the front of repentance. Amen? Over their sin. Believer, would we make sure our heart is repentant today? 
would we make sure confession is even you're, you're agreeing with God? Our problem today is we do too much agreeing with the world. We do too much agreeing with our own feelings about the matter. When we feel like marriage is hard and we feel like the only easy way out is divorce. When we feel like maybe we're hearing a lie, we're listening to a lie, we feel like it's going to make it easier. We feel like it's just going to make all of life happier and better. I just want help. Would we re replace us agreeing with those lies? Would we start agreeing with the will of God? Amen. God says here in just a second, I hate divorce. I hate it. We might love it. That's a problem. We might think it's a consideration. Sadly, today, people go into marriage thinking it's a consideration. They go into marriage thinking, well, if it gets hard, if it doesn't work out, I'll just get out. Believer, this shouldn't be so with us. Again, you, here's one more lie you might buy. You might be like, it's the most kindest thing I could do to them. You might feel good about yourself. You might feel justified, and you might be thinking, I'm doing them a favor. But you know what God says? He says it's treacherous. He says it's betrayal. The worst thing that we could do. He says that one that should have been your companion, that should be your wife, the wife of your covenant. But then he goes into saying, look, uh, didn't God make you one? This is, listen, this is very, very important. When we got married, when we came into our spouse, uh, we became one. God made us one. We were once two in the beautiful union of God making one. Amen? You see the beauty of marriage. You see the beauty of something. And listen, God created it. It doesn't matter if the world is trying to redefine it into something that it's not or trying to justify ending it. Listen, God made marriage and it's beautiful. As there are times where it's hard, amen, there it is. But it is sometimes in those times that God is growing you the most in holiness, amen? It is sometimes in those times that He is growing you the most in unconditional love, amen? It's easy to love your spouse when they're being really lovable. Amen? But God calls you to unconditional love. He made you one. Listen, believe it. We need to remind ourselves how beautiful that is. God did that. And what God has brought together, let no man tear apart. Amen? That should be the truth that we hold to. But then he also says, and, and why did he make us one? He says this, he says that he might seek a godly seed. God desires within, and within marriage, within Christian marriage, for more generations of godly seeds to be raised. Amen? He does. That's what God desires. But listen, don't confuse this with, okay, I'll just stay faithful, I'll stay married until I raise my kids, I raise them in the Lord, I raise them in church, and then I'm getting out. That's not what God's saying. God says for a lifetime, till death do us part. But listen, divorce or un un ungodliness with this, it puts a hindrance on raising up a godly seed. Amen? I'm not saying it can't be done. There's exceptions. In my family, uh, sadly, there was unfaithfulness when I was being raised. Don't even think my dad was a, he was a professing believer, but not a possessing one. Later, thankfully, later in his years, I, I got to realize that he got finally got saved and got, then got baptized, and that was a joyous time for me. But listen, there was continuing unfaithfulness. And my, there was a divorce. And by the grace of God, my mom was able to raise all four of his kids in the Lord. Amen? So can God's grace do it? Yes, but listen, that's not his original intent. Amen? God wants two believers together forever. He wants their faithfulness here. He wants their faithfulness to him in the home. 
He wants you living out your faith vibrantly before your kids. He wants you discipling your kids. He wants you to be able to give them the gospel so that they would be saved and that they keep seeing your example of faith their whole life to where their faith is vibrant and to where they're going to lead their kids to Christ. Amen? Listen, my friend, that is God's will. Amen? And I'm just going to tell you, the enemy wants to tear the family apart. But God wants the family to succeed. But he says, therefore, since he said all of these things, since this is God's will, since this is what he wants it to be, he says, take heed to your spirit. He's saying, guard your heart, believer. Do you know what I'm trying to do in your, in your family? So guard your heart. Let the Word of God lead you, and you better guard your heart to be faithful. He says that. Therefore, excuse me, and let none deal. He says none. Don't let any of us believers, don't let any of us deal treacherously with the wife of our, our youth. It says, for the Lord, the God of Israel saith. And it doesn't matter what other people are saying. It doesn't matter if you think some Christian gave you permission. Listen, it matters what the Word of God says. Amen? It would be well if we would follow it. But it says this. He saith that he hateth putting away. He hates divorce. Do you want to know God's feelings towards it? His thoughts towards it? He hates it. It's the very opposite of what he designed. Amen? It says, for one covereth violence with this garment. With his garment. Again, in their custom, when they're going to get married, he, uh, he would put a garment over her. What? It's symbolizing, I'm your protector. Right? The husband was taking her in and being her protector and loving her and cherishing her and providing for her and vowing to be faithful and good to her. And what God says, look, is it's dealing out violence with divorce. Again, don't buy the lie. It's going to be the best thing I could do. The Word of God says it's violence. And we've seen it. We've seen the destruction of divorce. And listen, again, I remind you, I'm not here to condemn. But I'm here so that the people of God... And see the will of God. Listen, that we can repent. And that we can cling to what God wants us to cling to. Amen? Even if it's been done in the past, maybe you're married now. Listen, be faithful. Be faithful. Don't give up. Don't give up. It says he, he hates it. It says, therefore, take heed to your heart that ye deal not treacherously. Again, let us repent of sin. When God listens, He forgives. When God forgives, sin is, is, is behind. It's, it's washed, it's covered, it's gone. Amen? We all need that. But listen, take heart right now. Be faithful to your spouse. Amen? As fellow believers that love each other, that hold each other accountable, be witnesses. Encourage those you love. Be faithful. Love your spouse. Here's what I believe is a sign of repentance in us and believers is that we are to love what God loves. We are to love what is good. And we are to hate what God hates and abhor it and flee from it. Amen. So today, if anything, with all of the Word of God that we hear, our, our, whole, our whole pursuit and study of the Word of God is to better understand Him and better understand His heart and His will. Amen? And if you are wanting to be revived, everything that God said He loves, love it. Amen? Take it near and dear to your heart. Want it to be so, starting in your own life. Amen? Love marriage. Love faithfulness. Love unconditional love to your spouse. Love a love that does not end. 
Love that love that endures, that is patient, that is kind, that does not keep record of wrong. Amen. Practical ways to have your marriage stay together. Everything that we hear that God hates, that is not His will. May we hate it? I didn't say hate the person. We would all be hated if we hated sinners. But hate the sin. Even in a politically correct world believer, we've got to be faithful to hate sin. When we know that it is the complete rebellion of the will of God, when we know it is an opposition of everything good, when we know that it is those sins that put our Christ on the Savior, our Christ on the cross, amen? We hate sin. And we need to start with hating our own, amen, our own sin. I plead with you today. Again, I don't seek to condemn. But I pray today that we hear the will of God. I pray today that, again, if you've heard things that hurt, don't run out of here and go to a church that won't preach the truth. Amen. Believers need to endure sound teaching and doctrine. Amen? We don't need to go run off to a church, and there's plenty that will scratch itching ears that don't want to hear about sin, that don't want to hear about repentance, that don't want to hear about submission and humility. Amen? We need to want the truth. That's what we need. The believer know today if we would repent of sin. If God is working on your heart, believer, I plead with you, repent, turn to Him, receive that faithful forgiveness. And then listen, pick right on up and go about serving the Lord with all your heart. Amen? Freely. As we stand.